I think that the reality is setting in that they'd like to get one of those top guys, but they also don't want to be embarrassed uh, the rest of the way here. You know, they want to see their team go out and play hard. They want to see their team put up a fight. And quite frankly, you know, Tommy DeVito, who will now be the 10th rookie quarterback to start a game. And in you know both situations tonight between Carolina and, uh, you know, the Bears, you have a first overall pick going against a rookie free agent signing, which is amazing. <laughs> which is amazing TV on national with Al well, Michaels sitting there. Yeah, it'd be probably heavily medicated going well, the game. It'll be interesting to see how they do that whole thing. It's not an easy thing to do. I know that I've been in that situation. But uh, so here come the Giants with uh, with Tommy DeVito and good for Tommy. I mean, it's it's a great opportunity. It's something that, uh, you know, I'm sure when he was a kid, he was he was hoping for and he was shooting for and loves ball and wants to be around. And everybody says, you know, why wouldn't you start another guy that has a little bit more experience? I'll tell you why. Because this kid, he deserves it. He's earned it from his time when he the Giants started with him in OTAs to preseason. He's been there every single week uh, for Daniel Jones and for the team. Uh, he sat behind Tyrod Taylor quietly, never said a word, just went about his business like a good professional should. And the Giant coaches recognized, yeah, you know, we could probably put Matt Barkley out there. Maybe he would know our offense a little bit better because he played in it up in Buffalo. But at the end of the day, we want to give this kid a chance. He deserves it. So you don't look at the Tommy DeVito uh, yesterday being named the starter by Brian Dable as a sign of tanking. That, no, that, that no. is not. I, it's a sign of reality is yeah. what it is. This is, is what, not a uh, Doug Peterson, Nate Sudfeld situation. This is, this is hell. This kid's been around. Uh, we had to throw him into a tough situation. He's been here since the beginning, and he's earned the right to play right. in you, this football if game. If you would have told me that Daniel Jones is healthy, Tyrod Taylor is healthy, and they elevated Tommy DeVito to, to finish the season out, I would say they were tanking. Yeah. They're not tanking. They're giving an opportunity to a young man who deserves an opportunity. And I sat in those shoes. Believe me, I started four games my rookie year. It was exciting for me. It was a dream come true for me. And it's going to be a dream come true for him. So uh, um, I didn't expect anything other than what they announced yesterday. I mean, I thought it was going to be Tommy DeVito. DeVito. So here he goes. I mean, uh, it's just another... you could look at it from another way. Like, you know, here we go again. And just another lost giant season. But for that young man specifically, for his family, for his friends, for his high school coaches, his college teammates, this is a huge deal. It yeah. is a huge deal. Yeah. And I, I do feel great for him. I mentioned it that first game when he ran in that touchdown, it had to be a very, very cool thing. And maybe with the first team reps and the game experience he's had already, he ends up going out there and being pretty competent. I mean, that is, that is on the table as well. I wouldn't be amazing if Tommy DeVito became the story of a great quarterback the rest of the year. And Zach Wilson was sitting there struggling for the jets, uh, the remainder of the year. But I, the, the the giant fan friend of yours who said he doesn't want to be embarrassed. Can you lose a bunch of games? Is it a reality where you can lose a bunch of games and be a t- top three in the draft team and also not be embarrassed? You know, I can, can only, that be I can only go by what teams I root for have done over the years and how I felt when they did what they decided to do. So let's just take the Mets, for instance. Mm-hmm. Uh, they traded David Robertson in the middle of the season, then they jettisoned both. Verlander and Scherzer, season over. Yeah, I was disgusted. Yeah, I was like, okay, so we're just, you know, this is the best interest of the Mets moving forward, and the powers that be that spent all this money are willing to eat the money, trade the guys, and hopefully refortify the the lower system that maybe we somehow, some way, have a couple of good guys coming up in a couple of years, maybe even this year. Who knows? So I understood that from, but I didn't mean I was happy about it. I remember when the Jeff Gordon, the GM of the Rangers, sent out a letter and said, you know, guys, uh, right in the middle of the season, we're going to move on and we're going to get away from some of these players. We're going to make some trades. It's going to be hard. We traded our captain, Ryan McDonough, to the Tampa Bay uh, Lightning. He ends up winning two cups with the Lightning, by the way. And uh, Oh, wow. Boomer weaved hockey into this conversation. <laughs> and wa- watching that and, and, and being a season ticket holder, by the way, I was disgusted. Yep. You know, I'm like, I didn't pay, you know, premium prices to watch AHL hockey, you know, so I was disgusted. So I know exactly where the giant fan is coming from. And then as I was watching the rest of the year, that year with the Rangers, and of course, as we were watching this year with the Mets, you want to see young guys or guys like Pete Alonso go out and have great years in terms of numbers. 
And at least you're rooting from that from that perspective. Yeah. And for me, and if I I've had teams in this situation with whether it be the Knicks or a really bad Vikings team, even like when Kirk Cousins went down, they were one and four. I was thinking, well, maybe if they're going to move on from Kirk Cousins, if you end up tanking the rest of the year and you're terrible, you get one of those quarterbacks. So I've been in this situation. So I know how you may be in that situation right now. I mean, when you think about it, I mean, you guys got four wins, but. Yeah, I mean, you have a quarterback that was playing on another team two weeks ago. Yeah, no, I know, but five wins. They're over oh, 500. Five, they're, 500. they're actually in the oh, playoff five. conversation. They got one of the wild cards. So I think that tanking thing is is probably out the window. And the, the way that the schedule looks, they, they could win a few more games. But So I know where the Giant fan is mentally right now, and you, you have to lose. Like, you, if you are a fan, you want your team to lose. I'm sorry. You need one of these quarterbacks because – the alternative isn't great. The alternative is Daniel Jones comes back after two major neck injuries in his career off a torn ACL. And then you're essentially going with him next year by the time that he's ready. And then you might end up in the similar situation as you were last season, where if he plays well, now he's under contract. You don't get out of that contract because you don't have an alternative and you're just stuck in neutral for the next four years. What you need is a reason to now move on from Daniel Jones. And that reason will be the availability to draft one of these top quarterbacks so this year. So why do you think Joe Shane and his Scouts were out there at USC Washington this past oh. Saturday night. Yeah, I mean it was it wasn't to watch the offensive linemen. Well, <laughs> baby, baby, there there are a number of players on that team that are going to go uh, pro. There's no uh, both teams that are going to go pro, uh, but the quarterbacks were at the top of the list, you know. And even though Caleb Williams lost, and even though it's been somewhat of a lost season for last year's Heisman Trophy winner, he's still going to go number one. I think he's the consensus number one pick. I don't think anybody's going to change their mind over this. And, uh, you know, whether it be Drake Bay or Michael Penix, the quarterback at Washington, who will end up being the next pick, that will be the discussion point. It will be, you know, C.J. Stroud, uh, Bryce Young. It, this year it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be Caleb Williams. And then what? Is it Drake May? Is it Penix? Is it the kid at LSU? I'll be looking for that big Penix. Is it the kid down in Texas? You know, where, where you know, who's the next guy? And then the guy after that. And that will be the debate as we approach uh, the draft of 2024 yeah but can't you see that the if the Giants win a few games and all the guys that they would have drafted at, at the quarterback position are gone because they're drafting too far back in the draft and then Daniel Jones comes back healthy and then has a halfway decent year and they go nine and eight and they basically look around and go well, what the hell are we supposed to do now <laughs> I mean now we're gonna have to keep them we got them under contract so we, we now we can't get out of this contract so we might as well just keep them because there's no other alternative right that could be the case the other thing too is that I many believe in the NFL that Kyler Murray who will be starting for the Arizona Cardinals this week you know, it's kind of tied to the Cardinals, at least for the next two to three years, because of this ridiculous contract that they yeah, gave they them. can't get out of it like the Giants can get right. out of their contract so with Daniel Jones. There's a chance that, you know, you got to believe that maybe the Giants do what the Panthers did and, you know, trade up with the team that has the first overall pick. And that's exactly what they did with the Bears. The Bears thought that they had their quarterback at the future of Justin Fields. They're questioning that now. So you if if Arizona ends up with the worst record, you could still trade up with the uh, you know, with the Cardinals, assuming that you are in a spot in the first round that the Cardinals want to be in to be able to acquire the player that they want out of this draft. Yeah, what you want if you're a Giants fan from the Cardinals is Kyler Murray to look healthy, play relatively well, so the Cardinals don't find a way to end up getting rid of Kyler Murray or finding like a Kyler Murray trade partner. What you want is the Cardinals to want to keep Kyler Murray. So that's what you're looking for. If he completely falls apart and it's a total disaster, I don't even know how they're going to get out of it. Um, but what you want, if possible, is these teams that are terrible ahead of you right now in the draft to not want to draft a quarterback. And that's going to be very difficult. The Bears, with two of those picks, absolutely will be drafting a quarterback. But good thing that the Bears have two of those picks because they're not drafting two quarterbacks. So at least there'll be one there. You would assume that the, um, the uh, not the Carolina Panthers, but you would assume that the Arizona Cardinals, if they can't get out, are going to not draft a quarterback. So that's a good thing. Now, what about the New England Patriots? 
that's a total wild card situation. I don't know who the coach is going to be from all the stuff we talked about. I don't know how Mac Jones finishes this year, but you would think if they are up there and they're making a move and they have a chance to get somebody of that ilk that they would probably move on from Mac Jones, even though they drafted him a couple of years ago. Oh, they would definitely move on. Definitely move on. Depending on the guy that they were able to draft, there's no question about it in my mind. And the thing is, is that, you know, the Giants and the Patriots do play each other in a couple weeks. Yeah, that's right. That'll be an interesting one. I mean, I guess on paper, if Mac Jones is playing at that time, the Patriots should be a little bit better than the Giants, you would think. You would you would think. So they're playing New England in uh, week 12. So that is the, uh, I guess that's the weekend of Thanksgiving. And New England is coming here. Yep, that's right. I mean, in this, so you've got 100% a loss on Sunday with the Cowboys, the commanders. I don't even know what the hell to expect out of them. I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility. I mean, the Giants, well, no matter Howell what. Is actually playing well. No, I know he is, but the Giants always beat Washington. Like, no matter what, they're always beat. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know about that. Well, we'll see. They I are. Mean, I, I mean, know, Daniel Jones, you ever see Daniel Jones' record against Washington? It's yeah, but crazy. he ain't playing. I know, but it just shows you that Daniel Jones, with all his struggles that he has, is beating the hell out of them. I mean, they just beat the crap out of him the last time, too. I mean, I, I just, this is going to be, first of all, Tommy DeVito's got to make it out of the game this week. Uh, you know, this is not going to be an easy game by any stretch of the imagination. The, the thing is, is like, remember the Cowboys early on in the season, they went to Arizona and got beat? Yeah. The Cowboys are a weird team, man. I think they're a really good team, but I think they're a weird team. Like, why would they lose, or how could they lose to Arizona? Yeah, I know, and they've got a weird history with the Cardinals. Like, it doesn't, like, over the 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 last number of years, they have a tough time out in Arizona. I don't know. That was a tough one. The Cardinals were playing tough at that time. You remember, they jumped out to that big lead against the Giants. So, I mean, they, but, yeah, I don't know. I mean, how does, how does any of that happen? How do any of these upsets happen uh, in the NFL? But... I would I would say that if Tommy DeVito and the Giants were to beat the Dallas Cowboys in Dallas yeah. this week, yep. that would be probably the biggest upset we have seen in New York football oh, easily. in a very, very long I, time. I think easily. Very Actually. long time. Oh, did the Jets win a game or one or two games a few years back? Well, I mean, they ended up going out to L.A. and beating the Rams. That's that right. Year. Yeah, that was Adam Gase and Frank Gore and ruined their entire franchise by winning that game because they could have had Trevor Lawrence. I mean, I'd have to go back and look, but minus fifteen hundred on the money line. Yeah, I mean, that's like Alabama against Alcorn State type of stuff. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell so you're notified when we're dropping new content.